Hello everyone, this is Starman, and welcome back to Let's Play The Curse of Monkey Island. Well, our new fiancé is now a golden statue. Just our luck. It's Elaine. I've got to change her back somehow. Well, can we pick her up? She must weigh a ton. Uh, no offense. Hey, I wonder how many carrots she... No, no, bad idea. Well, he is a pirate. Elaine? Honey? You okay? Can I get you anything? I'll just start lifting that pirate curse then, huh? And we'll see the fort in the distance. That fort has seen better days. That fort has seen better days. Secret button? Hmm. Oh, why not? Fun. The bridge is uncrossable. It's just as well. There's nothing interesting in the fort anyway. Yeah, we'll just pretend that you know that. But hey, glowing ember. It's a glowing ember left over from the battle. Ouch! And he put that in his pants. Because of course he did. It's an informative plaque put up by the Plunder Island Naturalist Society. Plunder Island Feral Chicken. One of Plunder Island's most common fauna and the animal for which our capital of Puerto Pollo is named. Neat. Okay, so we're on Plunder Island then. Mm, no. Okay, I can't take the plaque? Nah. I can't talk to it. Can I talk to the feral chicken? Ahoy! I don't think so. It looks dangerous. Hmm, voodoo markings. Mysterious. Yeah, one of them looks uh, kind of like the LucasArts I logo. A little bit. Well, let's make sure there's nothing else on this side of the beach. Ah, hey, Banner. The Long John Silver Center for the Performing Arts presents Spear. It says, Welcome to Puerto Pollo from the Plunder Island Poultry Brotherhood. It says, Welcome to Puerto Pollo from the Plunder Island Poultry Brotherhood. Hmm. All right, well, we're here at the fort, and it looks like we have a couple of different locations. A uh, city of some type here. Looks like there's some dark, sinister place over here. Uh, some place in the swamp over here. And something on the beach over there. I think we'll go ahead and check the swamp first, because it's closest. Hmm. That skull looks oddly familiar. Hmm. Oh, nothing funny to say about that? Alright. Oh, it looks like it was thrown here by a typhoon. Boom! Ah! <laughs> oh, it's just you again. Just your most terrifying image of evil revisited! Yeah, right. I bring you warning from the Infernal Realms. Do not go farther into the swamp. Turn back. Turn back. Darkness will envelop you. How'd you get all the way up there? Through sheer force of will. Uh-huh. All right, there was a bunch of those weird voodoo kids. They found me on shore and put me on top of this spike all the time thinking they were so funny. What are you doing up there? I am standing as a testament. Standing? Hanging as a testament to the power of the forces of evil that will one day claim victory over the entire Earth. How long are you going to keep doing that? As long as it takes. 
Must get pretty dull up there, I suppose. Never! The powers of darkness are never dull! We will one day prove that... Oh, who am I trying to fool? I'm bored out of my skull. Figuratively speaking, of course. Do you need me to help you down? Help! I need no help from you foolish mortals! I am Murray, the all-powerful demonic skull! Okay, just thought I'd ask. Don't get me wrong, I do appreciate the offer. Well, just because he's evil Hellspawn doesn't mean he can't be polite. You seem restless. Oh, I don't know, it's just that not many people come through this swamp. What would you rather be doing? I need to be out among the lesser people, terrifying them and causing pain and misery. That would make you happy? Yes, happy in a dark demonic way. Do you know anything about lifting curses? Oh, right. I know a lot about lifting curses. That's why I'm a disembodied talking skull, sitting on top of a spike in the middle of a swamp. You seem bitter. I'm sorry. It's been a rough day. I'd love to stay in chat, but uh, I gotta go. <laughs> Well, maybe whoever lives in the ship house can uh, help us with breaking a curse. Admiral Sweetum spit o jerky bubblegum. Five cents. Hmm. I wonder. Wow, I got a whole pack of gum. Bit o jerky bubblegum. This gum feels warm. It's a glowing ember left over from the battle. Hmm. Hmm. I don't want those dull little scissors. Hmm. It's a bottle of paste. How cute! A paper voodoo doll. What a relief! <laughs> that will probably have some meaning later, but uh... it's a paper voodoo doll. I don't need it. It's just a toy. I don't need it. It's just a toy. So you tell yourself. It's a big stuffed alligator with an unusually long tongue. Hmm. Ta-da! Okay, now for those who haven't played the Monkey Island games before, uh, this is the Voodoo Priestess, and she has helped us out in all the previous games. Although, strangely enough, you can play through the first Monkey Island game without meeting her. Uh, I actually did that when I first played through it, and then discovered, what, what do you mean that I had to deal with this lady before when I played the sequel? But, uh, she will explain who she is, thankfully. Who are you, and how did you just appear like that? I am one gifted with a second sight, adept at manipulating the forces of nature for the benefit of all who enter my door. You're a fashion consultant. Well, yes, but that's not what I was referring to. I am a voodoo priestess. Neat. You're an autumn, by the way. Don't I know you from somewhere? We have known each other for a very long time, Guybrush Threepwood. You've been through much, so it is understandable that you have forgotten me. We met on Melee Island when you were first trying to become a pirate. Hang on a second. Are we going to do one of those flashback things? They always make me nauseous. No, I'll make this quick. I twice helped you defeat the evil pirate LeChuck, first by preparing the voodoo antelope. I'm starting to remember. And then again by helping you prepare a voodoo doll of his zombie form. That's right. You've helped so much, and I still don't know your name. I am known by many names on many different islands. 
but names have little importance. You should know this more than anyone, Guybrush Threepwood. Yes, you're right. Hey, are you making fun of me? I wouldn't dream of it. Nice place. I love what you've done with it. Thank you. You'll have to excuse the mess. The kids came over to play with their paper voodoo dolls. They're adorable children. Would you like to see some pictures? Let's see. No, no, please no. For the love of all of this good and holy no, I can't think of anything I would hate more. Um... Perhaps later. Yes, there's no time for that now. I sense that something terrible has happened. Hey, you're good. Something terrible has happened. I finally proposed to Elaine. Congratulations. That doesn't sound so ter- And when I placed the engagement ring on her hand, she was placed under a horrible pirate curse and trapped for eternity as a solid gold statue. Oh, that explains it. I was struck with a wave of overwhelming hatred and anger. Yeah, that LeChuck was a pretty mean guy. I was talking about Elaine. Well, there's no time to worry about that now. We have to hurry. Do not panic, Guybrush. She will be safe until we can break the curse. You only have to worry about her being stolen. Where did you hide her? Uh, hide? Hide her? You didn't hide her? She's a solid gold statue on an island full of pirates. What were you thinking? Go, Guybrush, hurry, before you're too late. Elaine! I've got to get her back. This is so embarrassing. Looks like I'm gonna need some more help. Someone's stolen Elaine. That is unfortunate. It will be difficult to get her back. Do you know who kidnapped her? Not for certain, but I suspect that it's the mangy pirates anchored in Danger Cove. Can you give me something to lift the curse? No. LeChuck's curse is a very powerful one. Fueled by his anger and his intense frustration in dealing with the opposite sex. I have nothing here to lift so powerful a curse, but there is one way. Great! Tell me! You have to replace the cursed ring with a pure one of greater or equal value. A good guideline is two months out. Hmm. Not that I'm, you know, cheap, but... Isn't there a more budget-conscious way to lift this curse? You should be able to do it with virtually no out-of-pocket expense. Perfect. How? Legends speak of a whopping big diamond ring on Blood Island. Blood Island? I've never heard of it. You will soon become quite familiar with it. But you must be careful, Guybrush. I have foreseen that your journey will be filled with peril and deception. I have also seen that Blood Island will be the place where you will die. Uh-huh. So, uh, any huge uncursed rings on any other islands? No. The value of the ring on Blood Island comes from its emotional significance. It represents a pure, true love. A power greater than any other. Oh, that's sweet. I, I think I have something in my eye. Do not mock the voodoo priestess. All right. Well, how do I get there? How do I find the ring? It sounds dangerous. You have to come with me. Blood Island sounds dangerous. You have to come with me. No, I cannot. I have lived on three different islands in the past six years. I do not wish to travel anymore. Besides, this derelict is still an escrow. But who will give me information and advice? But who will point me in the right direction? But who will explain away the gaping plot holes? But who will be the game's only female character? But who will explain away gaping plot holes? You've got to come. You're my only hope. No, Guybrush. There is another. Yes, of course, they threw in a Star Wars reference. How do I get to Blood Island? You will need three things. 
a map to Blood Island, for the journey is a long and dangerous one, a seaworthy ship to take you there, and an experienced crew. Map, ship, and crew. Got it. All right. Well, how will I find the ring on Blood Island? All I can say is that I see a long and painful history connected with that ring. And I feel a great sadness associated with it. You will learn more once you have actually found the island. Blood Island, here I come! Okay, who did you say kidnapped Lane? How many are you going to lift the cursed? I found a few LeChuck and Skeleton Pirates. I finally defeated LeChuck and his Skeleton Pirates. True evil can never be destroyed completely. But I heard him blow up and everything. You'd be surprised at how much abuse an evil undead zombie pirate can take. Eh, let's see, how can I destroy him for good? I finally found Big Whoop. That's the pirate treasure from the second game. I was nervous disappointed. What makes you think LeChuck will be back? I'm sick of talking about that jerk LeChuck. Eh, how can I destroy him for good? How can I finally destroy him for good? No one knows. His power seems to grow with every incarnation. You may have dealt with him for now, but this respite can only be temporary at best. And I finally found Big Whoop and was enormously disappointed. Big Whoop is pure evil. You were lucky to escape alive. I can't remember much about it. Just that I was expecting so much more and felt so let down. Yes, it is the source of much of LeChuck's power. Well, I'm never going back there again. I have foreseen otherwise. You will return to Big Whoop and confront LeChuck once again. What makes you think LeChuck will be back? Some men can search their entire lives and never discover their reason for being. Chuck has found his to perpetually rise from the dead and torment you and Elaine. It's what he does best. Gee, when you put it that way, it's kind of hard to stay mad at him. Uh, what island is this anyway? What island is this anyway? You have landed on Plunder Island. Plunder Island? Sounds appropriately piratey. Naturally. It's a sort of retirement community for ex-pirates and their spouses. Hmm, sounds exciting. Lately, there has been all too much excitement on the island. All centering around Governor Marley, the Chuck, and a giant chicken. A giant chicken. Elaine is governor of this island too? Actually, Elaine is the governor of the entire Tri-Island area comprised of Melee, Booty, and Plunder Island. She moved to her fort here on Plunder after the kitchen and landscaping staff quit her Booty Island mansion. Yeah, Booty Island being where Lane lived in the second game and Melee Island being the main setting of the first game. And a quick little note here, a little trivia thing. There actually was an attempt to make a Monkey Island movie uh, many years ago. The script went around Hollywood for a bit, but never really uh, found a home. And then, curiously enough, the guy who wrote it uh, wrote something for Disney, a little movie you may have heard of called Pirates of the Caribbean Curse of the Black Pearl, where you suddenly have this wannabe pirate character, uh, his much more capable pirate girlfriend, and an evil undead pirate. So, yeah, there's a lot of speculation that LeChuck became Barbosa, Guybrush Threepwood became Will Turner, and that Elaine Marley became Elizabeth Swan. And that they just threw Captain Jack Sparrow in there to make things a little bit more chaotic. Fascinating, uh, you know, to look at these games thinking about that now. But, uh, I digress. Anyway. How did you end up on Plunder Island? I realized that my location in the swamp on Scarb Island wasn't ideally situated. So you moved to a swamp on a different island? I just said I could see the future. I never claimed to be an expert in real estate. What about this giant chicken business? Ah yes, Skybrush. You have landed on an island gripped 
by the cold, clammy hand of fear. Don't you think you're being a bit overdramatic? This was a peaceful island until the great beast landed on our shores. Some say it was sent to make the islanders pay for their cruelty. Others claim it was simply blind fate. Whatever the impetus, it came. The infamous bear pig of Wonder Island. Is this going to be scary? Ah! Ah! What? What? I'm not even at the scary part yet. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. It was El Pollo Diablo, the giant demon chicken. Tall as a man and twice as powerful, his massive drumsticks propel him through the dark jungle with ease. No one has seen the beast, but on the eve of the full moon, his blood-curdling squawk can be heard from every corner of this wretched island. In the dark of night, he roosts patiently, watching, waiting for the one day no, 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 wait. Don't tell me. Let me guess. He's hatching a diabolical scheme. He's establishing new pecking order. He's going to buck, buck, buck the system. He's crossing the road to freedom. Oh, uh, let's go with the last one. He's crossing the road to freedom! He roams the island, exacting terrible vengeance on those who would capture and eat his smaller brethren. Oh, give me a break. There were once others like you, skeptical to the true nature of the beast. But they're all dead now, pecked into a bloody pulp by his savage beak. But I'm sure you have nothing to worry about. Yeah, right, whatever. Thanks, I've heard all I needed to know. All right, I'd know about this voodoo spell you're working on. I want to know what voodoo spell you're working on. Voodoo spell? Oh, this. This is just a fondue I'm making for tonight. Would you like to try it? Does it have any skink toes in it? A few. Not pass. Hmm. Well, as long as we're here. I want to know more about safe hair replacement systems. I can imagine. Didn't you have a beard the last time I saw you? I sure did. A really cool one. I wonder what happened to it. I want to know more about a diet I can live with. I'll share with you knowledge passed from mother to daughter in my family for generations. What's that? Low fat, high fiber. It works. I want to know more about variable rate mortgages. Bad idea. Though attractive to the first time homeowner, the rate reacts wildly to fluctuations in the market and can work against the buyer over time. You're best off starting with a 20% down payment and a variable rate mortgage, then refinancing at a fixed rate after one or two years as the market warrants. Could you repeat that? No. Aw. I want to know more about a career in TV and VCR repair. So you want to make more money? Sure, we all do. Stick to pirate. <laughs> and I want to know more about the Aztec god, Quetzalcoatl. Really sweet guy. Not at all as bloodthirsty as they make him out to be. Shorter than you might think. All right, well. Thanks for your help. Gotta go. Well, we have ourselves a goal now. Actually, we've got a couple of goals. It's a voodoo pen. It's a bottle of paste. Let's see if Murray has anything useful to say now. I think he wants to be alone right now. No. I'll keep him busy. Uh, 
Well, we got the swamp, we got the cove there. Don't look like we've got much else except for the town. So let's go and uh, meet the people in the neighborhood. How inspiring. A budding young entrepreneur. Five cents. Oh, disclaimer. The Surgeon General of Plunder Island has determined that ingredients in this product may be harmful or fatal if swallowed. And a fun little gag about the small pirate here. Uh, he is voiced by the late Gary Coleman, a.k.a. the What You Talking About Willis kid from uh, Different Strokes. Can I push around the small pirate? I'm bigger than him. I'm no bully. Aw. It's a mug for the lemonade. Hello there, Sonny. You open yet? Oh boy, oh boy. My first customer. Gee willikers, is this gonna be swell? Hi, my name's Kenny. Kenny Foulmouth. It sure would be neat if you would buy some of my lemonade. It only costs a nickel. And best of all, I have a bottomless mug policy. That does sound like a good deal. Is the lemonade good? Oh, gosh, yes. It's a very helpful drink. Even better for you than placing leeches on your tongue. Wow. I'd like to buy some lemonade. Sure. We have a bottomless mug policy, you know. That'll be a nickel. Hey, there's no bottom to this mug. Give me my money back. I'm sorry. I did tell you about our bottomless mug policy. And there are no refunds. Why, you little... Thank you. Come again. What's the lemonade good for? It's a dandy tonic for scurvy. It'll cure all your symptoms, including, but not limited to, gradual weakening, aching muscles, sunken eyes, painful gums, Ashen skin, loss of teeth, internal bleeding, the reopening of old wounds, diarrhea, kidney failure, fainting, halitosis, and death. Well, that's actually a pretty good deal. Will it cure evil pirate curses? No, but it has a refreshing citrus flavor with no unpleasant aftertaste. What's the lemonade good for? Drinking. Oh. I want my money back. Why? Was the lemonade bad? I don't know. I didn't drink any. Well, if you're not dissatisfied with our product, I can't justify giving you a refund. I'm sorry, but it's company policy. But... Thank you. Have a nice day. Goodbye. All right. Hey, die. Danger Cove. Danger, do not enter. But it's Danger Cove. Beware. Hmm. It's a great big vat full of red dye. Number two. Hmm. Bush, a pristine example of one of the many decorative bushes used for landscaping Plunder Island. Plunder Island Naturalist Society Nature Trail. Yeah, it looks uh, a bit overgrown. What a strange flower. Wow. This jungle is thick. I'll need something sharp if I'm going to hack my way through there. Hmm, like a machete, maybe? Ipecac, Cephalus ipecacuana. One of the creeping vines common throughout Plunder Island. The syrup made from the ipecac flowers was used by the early settlers of Plunder Island as a purgative. In other words... It's a flower that's used to make people throw up. I can't carry it all. I need to cut through it. It's rooted in with the vine. I can't just pick it up. All right, so we need something to cut that. It's a chicken coop, but I don't see any chickens. Hmm, odd. Feeling down because your chicks turned to gold? Come to the swamp, get your fortune told. Voodoo and things, formerly just voodoo. Visit our new location on Plunder Island. 
Yeah, just in case you didn't go to the swamp first, that's a nice little helpful hint. Blonde Beard's Chicken Shop. It's the two-way speaker for the walkthrough. Hmm. Uh, hello? I can't understand you. What was that? Eh, forget it. It's part of the complex drainage system for Blonde Beard's Chicken Shop. It's as thick as gravy. Actually, given the quality of fast food around these islands, that could be where the gravy is kept. Do you have a reservation? Uh, no. No reservation slip, huh? Then out you go! Alright, well, we will, uh, need a reservation to go in there, apparently. Which does somewhat limit our uh, opportunities for going in there, and something neat. Good evening. At the tone, Caribbean standard time will be 9, 30, 8, and 56 seconds. Beep. Yeah. Nice little uh, touch from the original uh, version of this. That, well, okay, I guess it's not the... Uh, unoriginal version of this, since I am playing this from the original disc and running it through uh, Scum MV, is that the time clock here in the time square will actually correspond to the real world time. Good evening. At the tone, Caribbean standard time will be 9, 30, 9, and 30, 2 seconds. Beep. So, uh, yeah, it's a nice little change from the original game where it was always 10 o'clock at night on the isle on Melee Island. In memory of the chickens who gave their lives during the Great Puerto Pollo Potluck Jamboree of 1621. Hmm, nice. The Long John Silver Center for the Performing Arts presents Spear. The front door is closed. Let's open it. It's locked. Ah, well, luckily, it appears that the stage door here in the alley is still usable. Hmm, let's see. Pirate coat. Looks like a nice coat. With just a few flakes of unsightly dandruff. That's weird. I didn't think dandruff moved. Oh... Well, never know, I might need some lice. It's a deloused pirate coat. Fake spears. There's some fake spears. I don't need a prop. Hey! It's a sticker from Blood Island. It says, Blood Island is for bleeders. A message from the Blood Island Tourism Council. Hey, maybe the performer who owns this trunk knows how to get to Blood Island. It's stuck to the trunk. It's an old travel trunk. It's covered with stickers from many faraway places. It's stuck to the trunk. It looks too heavy for me to carry. Just some fake swords. Hmm, won't let me pick them up, unfortunately. I wonder if there's a part in this play for a dashing rogue pirate. It's empty, or is it? I don't want to disturb the mystic powers of the hat. Well, let's see, it looks like I can't really do anything with the mirror, but hey, magic wand. Watch me make this disappear. It's empty. Or is it? Hmm. Ooh. They're, um, wiggling. Feeling down because your chicks turned to gold? Come to the swamp, get your fortune told. Voodoo and things. Formerly just voodoo. Visit our new location on Plunder Island. Hmm, didn't change much. It's a magic wand. Well, let's see, magic wand with a magic hat. Nothing up my sleeve. <laughs> Presto! Hey, it worked! There's something inside. Hey, a book. 
The A, V, C's of ventriloquism. The A, V, C's of ventriloquism. Hmm. Well, that could probably be useful. It smells like something's burning. Must be this shoddy 17th century electrical wiring. Wait a second. Somebody's been monkeying around with these controls. I'll need to read the instructions before they'll work. Yeah, with these bananas around, I think somebody really has been monkeying around with these. I'll need to read the instructions before they'll work. Hmm, alright. Well, clearly I need to find the instructions somewhere then. I think it's one of those pieces of paper there. A pirate by any other name would still reek. Arr. It's Yorick's headstone from Hamlet. Next, I burn Thebes, subdue its army. We had better looking trees in my fifth grade school play. And then I smash the watermelon. What? It's an actor. Thespian? Oh, I'm never going to get ready for this performance. That is just disturbing. Oh, yeah. That whole lend me your ears bit. So how do you get roped into doing this show? I'm a spokesmodel, actually. But what I really want to do is act. People just don't take you seriously when you're a spokesmodel. How surprising. Yeah, isn't it? Break a peg leg. Thanks. I sure hope I can get someone to actually do it. Uh-oh. That sounds like a quest hook. At four, scene eight. Join me, Rosencrantz. I am your father. Buddy. I'm a dangerous pirate. Who are you? Cromwell. Slappy Cromwell. It's not my real name, actually. My agent told me my given name just didn't have star quality. What was your given name? Rex Fortune, adventure seeker. I see. What's that putrid, stench-ridden drivel that you're rehearsing? But this, this is the master work of the Bard. Do you really think it's that bad? Oh, it's that bad. Do pirates drink grog? Was the Great Pyramid of Cheops originally 481 feet high? Bad like poi. Do pirates drink grog? Oh, I knew I shouldn't have altered the material. How could I have taken up my rigid pen and stabbed it bodkin-like through the unsullied poetry of the master? You rewrote Shakespeare? I was compelled to. Not a single person was coming to any of my performances. Oh, these stupid brutish pirates! Not men enough to confront their own sensitive inner natures. So, I rewrote the whole folio, contracted the brilliance of decades into a 45-minute review. Spear! A theatrical movie. Hmm. Can I join your show? Let me be blunt. You just don't have the hands of a spear carrier. You have no idea how often I hear that. Why can't you go back to the original scripts? Oh, the sweet, sweet, bitter irony of it all. Now that you have confirmed that I have produced a work of unredeemable trash, I'm more or less guaranteed to have a financial success in my hands. Why do I find that strangely encouraging? Hmm. That's theater for you. Can I watch you rehearse your horrible play? I'd rather you didn't. I get nervous when people watch. Of course. Hmm. Please, can I join your show? I was a tree in my kindergarten play. We already have a tree. Oh. Please, can I join your show? 
Sorry, this is a one-man show. Hey, what am I? Chopped liver? No, not liver. Liver has a more appealing stage presence. Yeah, let's see how many more gags we get out of this. Of course, what I really want to do is direct. Why? I've always dreamed of my own production. Titus Andronicus on ice. Brilliant! That would actually be kind of awesome. Acting is my life. Let me join your show. Sorry, this is a one-man show. All right. Please, can I watch you rehearse? I'd rather you didn't. And stop whining. Please, can I watch you rehearse? I'd rather you didn't. You might see the surprise ending to Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet die. Actually, that ending didn't set well with the focus groups. Please, can I watch you rehearse? I'd rather you didn't. Then you'll hear all the answers to my knock-knock jokes. Please, can I watch you rehearse? I'd rather you didn't. Come on, let me watch you rehearse. I'd rather you didn't. All right. Please, can I join your show? Sorry, this is a one-man show. Okay, we're gonna be stuck with that one. All right, let's get on with the plot, such as it is. Have you been to Blood Island? But of course. Blood Island was once the place to be if you were an artist in the Caribbean. Those were the days. We were young and wild, pushing the limits of our craft. Oh, what risky, daring performances we gave. We weren't afraid to shock or offend the stodgy, mainstream sensibilities of our audiences. Oh, what did you perform? Dinner theater, mostly. Could you tell me how I can find Blood Island? My agent, Palido Domingo, always handled the travel arrangements. He would know how to get there. Any idea where I could find him? He's a member of the Brimstone Beach Club here on Condor Island. You might catch him there. Well, there's our, there's our direction then. Carry on. And then I do some prop comedy. Prop tree. Big trees of this genus were often used by early settlers for theatrical productions. You blocks, you stones, you very old meat, you worse than unlaundered things. There are more things growing on the food in your galley, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. Then... I guess they changed the end of Romeo and Juliet. It's Juliet's balcony. Hi! Stu! If you're going to be an actor, you have to suffer for your art. Oh, okay. We may have to lose that part anyway. It's cutting into my monologue. There's no saving. The it. quality of grog be unstrained. Oh, Juliet, yada, 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 yada. Again, that's a bit of Foley work with him walking on the stage. All right, well, I don't think we're going to get any more... And uh, then... Any more comedy out of these two. Which is a shame because uh, you know there's some pretty good uh, humor there. Well, there's only one more location that I think we can go to in the town, as I recall. Welcome, patrons, to the Barbary Coast, where every haircut is an adventure. Hey, and if you're wanting a haircut, you'll have to wait until I'm finished with Captain Rottingham here. Are you guys pirate barbers? We prefer the term buccaneer hairstylists. Great. Maybe you guys can help me find this huge diamond ring I'm looking for. Diamond ring? Yeah, it's supposedly enormous, and it's on Blood Island. Blood Island? Never heard of it. It's a funny story, really. I need it to lift this curse that's turned my girlfriend into a solid gold statue. Solid gold? Wait a second. Did I just share too much? 
All right, well, we've got three pirates here. I think they'd probably make a fine crew, given the pop, uh, proper motivation. But we're going to have to do some uh, cunning things to get them to talk to us, much less help us. And this big bloke here doing the cutting is actually the never reason I decided to do the Let's Play of this game, because if you're thinking his voice, what we heard now, was just uh, a little bit familiar, that's because he's voiced by an actor named Alan Young, who is famous for, well, two parts mostly. One of them was he was the owner of uh, Mr. Ed the Talking Horse, you know, Wilbur on the old Mr. Ed show. But he was also the voice of Scrooge McDuck for Disney for many, many years. And unfortunately, he, uh, he passed on recently. But he also did the voice of this barber pirate here, who we are going to get to know pretty well. But uh, I think we will go ahead and close this chapter out here. And next time, we will start getting to know the employees of the Barbary Coast. Well, I'll see you next time.